Okay, well, if you have been following me on Instagram or Facebook, you probably see that I do a fair amount of long exposure photography. And I get asked quite a bit about it, and I get asked two questions usually. It's, why do you do it, and how do you do it? Um, I figured I would do a short video answering both questions. So, uh, first, why? Three main reasons. The first is, uh, I use it to simplify a scene or to uh, remove distractions from a scene. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples. So this is a photo you're looking at uh, of the Raritan Bay in New Jersey. This is an old outflow pipe. This is an interesting image, simple composition. I find the ripples in the water distracting. And this is about a, a one-fifth of, one of a second exposure. If I take the same shot, and I did, uh, and I make it a two minute and 20 second exposure, here's what happens. And you can see that that water is much smoother. You have movement in the, in the sky. It's a, it's a more serene image from my standpoint. I like it much better. So that's, that's the first reason. Um, secondly, using longer exposure photography, you can capture movement uh, a little bit better. Um, anything that's moving, water, clouds, people, uh, by having a somewhat longer exposure, again, you can capture that movement. Uh, some examples here. So uh, an architectural image. Here's an image I took in New York City and you get the great movement in the clouds. I think it adds a lot of drama to the image. Um, now this one happens to be a 60 second exposure, but it doesn't have to be that long an exposure depending on what you're shooting. If what you're shooting is moving quickly, like water or people, um, you don't need that long an exposure. Uh, to give you a second, this image you're seeing here is just one third of a second but it captures the water movement very nicely. This was an image I took in Hawaii. So anything like waves or waterfalls, you don't need to go that far, but again, a third of a second, a second, sometimes five seconds, uh, that will usually do it. Um, lastly, you use longer exposure when it's just simply too dark and the camera can't capture uh, you know, whatever you're shooting because of, there's not enough light. And so, for example, this image, this is a five second exposure. This was shot in New Jersey. Uh, sun hadn't risen yet, it was still kind of dark, but I wanted to capture some of the detail in the water uh, and obviously in the sky, so I went out to five seconds and got this pretty cool image. So those are some of the reasons why I do it. The next question I get is, how do you do it? And I think to answer that question, it would be better to go out in the field with you and actually show you how to do it. So let's do that now. Okay, well I have taken you to Staten Island, New York. I'm on the south shore of Staten Island and I came to shoot these old pilings that go up into the horizon. It's a really great subject for long exposure photography. Uh, and the other side of me is the Verrazano Bridge, a beautiful bridge, a long suspension bridge that goes from Staten Island to Brooklyn. Now, the basics. Uh, what will you need? You will need a tripod and you can see I've got my tripod set up in the background. The camera has to stay very still for an extended period of time and therefore you got to have a tripod. The next thing that is helpful is a remote shutter release which I have here that allows you not to touch the camera and you can click off a shot. Now you can't just set your exposure for a long time and hope the shot comes out well. Um, if, for example, if I did a 30 second exposure right now at say f2.8, this is what it's going to look like. It's totally blown out, totally overexposed. So you have to set your settings properly to get the right exposure. You can only do very long exposure when it's fairly dark or if you have, and the next thing you need probably, is a filter a neutral density filter which darkens the sky. Let me grab mine, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've grabbed my neutral density filter. It looks like this. It is really dark. You can barely see through it. And so what you want to do is put that on the front of the camera so it darkens, uh, darkens the scene quite a bit. And that allows you to use a much longer exposure, much longer exposure, uh, and you still get a, a good image. 
Um, let me pop it on the front of my camera and we can talk about some of the settings. Okay, well I've got my neutral density filter on the camera. In fact, I've got two filters. I've got the that ND filter I showed you and I've got a graduated neutral density filter as well. What that does is darken the sky but uh, the foreground is clear and so you balance out the scene that way because the sky is brighter than the foreground. Other thing you have to know is that you should focus the camera before you put that ND filter on. Why? Because the camera can't see through that filter very well. You cannot focus with it on. So you focus before, you lock your focus, and then you can, you can take your shot. Um, shutter speed. How long a shutter speed do you need? Well, you can see what the exposure is without the filter on. When you put it on, it will be much, much longer. How much longer? Uh, there are apps for that, believe it or not. You can get an app, it'll tell you exactly how long. You can do uh, trial and error, which I tend to do. Uh, you can have some instinct, which I tend to have. And so I have a pretty good sense of how long I have to go, but I'm always doing a little trial and error. But it's a good idea to have one of these apps that will, uh, will tell you how long to do it for. Now, you can't set your camera for a two minute exposure or a three minute exposure. You have to use a mode called bulb mode, B-U-L-B. And all that is, is um, the shutter will stay open until you unclick your camera. You press the shutter, you hold it down, and when you let go, then the shutter closes. Now, you don't sit there holding the shutter down. You use the remote shutter release to uh, essentially press it in, lock it, and then when you're ready to, again, close the shutter, you unlock it. But it's bulb mode. Uh, and again, you gotta have a timer, usually my watch or my phone, and so you have a sense of how long you are, you're shooting for. Okay, I've had this, uh, this shot going on for about a minute and a half. I'm gonna close that shutter. Ooh. It's a good shot, check it out. One other tip, and that is, if you're shooting and it's fairly bright out, you will need to cover up your eyepiece. What will happen is light can leak in there uh, and cause some uh, some discoloration in the photo. So most cameras come with a with a piece that covers up the uh, the eyepiece, or you can take a piece of tape. And, uh, and put it over it, or a hat or something, put it over the camera. You may have to do that though. And I am experiencing right now a beautiful sunrise. Nice morning. Hopefully those were some helpful tips for long exposure photography. Gotta grab some breakfast, head home, take a nap. <laughs>